is that the one for Mark? Well, no, David won't be here, so. Okay. No, I don't need that. Is this one picks up? Good morning, church. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here and those that are joining us on Facebook. If you're a visitor, please see one of the ushers and they'll give you a wonderful welcoming package. Our band of brothers meets on Wednesday morning at Caribou Coffee by Cub at 7 a.m. All men are welcome. We just have a little breakfast and a discussion and try to solve all the world's problems, which never works anyhow. <laughs> Thursday morning last week, they had our food share. We had 48 bags of groceries were given away to help those less fortunate with their Thanksgiving holiday. This very well received, many were thankful. One was brought to tears. Thank you to all that are contributing to our food share. We always welcome boxes of cereal, cash donations. We couldn't do this without out you. Tuesday evening at 6.30, the deacons will hold a Thanksgiving service, and then we'll have pie and fellowship afterwards. What's the pies there, Jim? What are we having for pie? Oh, apple and pumpkin pie and coffee. <laughs> you want to know, miss that? <laughs> <laughs> Our famous sprints. Christmas cookies, we'll be making them soon, um, December 5th and 6th. Sign-up sheets are on the tables downstairs. If you signed up last week, you can't find your name, it's on one of the tables. Um, thank you to all that participated in the Samaritan Purse Shoebox Mission. It was very well received. As you've heard, our extreme state lawmakers and our governor signed into a law bill enabling up-to-birth abortion. More than 12,000 unborn babies were aborted last year alone. The Minnesota Citizens Concerned for Life group will be meeting at St. Lawrence Church tomorrow evening at 7. There will also be discussion of bills that those lawmakers are working on that involve the disabled and elderly. Everyone is welcome to come and learn how to speak up and make a difference for our most vulnerable. As we mentioned last week, we will be taking a special collection today for Pastor Brian Wieda's trip to Israel. He will be leaving on Wednesday, so please keep Brian and other volunteers safely in your prayers. And do we have an extra um, offering plate for this in the back? Anybody know? I think they were supposed to put it in, a special in an envelope, put it in the plate, or make it very obvious if you're doing a check that in the memo line it says we a mission um, and then the trustees will sort through it thank you sandy we'll have an extra one after. okay okay great um let's see we're all welcome downstairs for treats and fellowship afterwards we will have the chosen bible study in the fellowship hall which gets adjusted depending on the time we get down there um if you would please help Esther Circle by signing up to bring treats for us to share on Sunday mornings. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Cookies will do. The sign-up sheet is on the treats table. If you have any questions, please ask any of the Esther Circle members. Now for the announcement from the call committee. We will be putting... Sheepers, Carolyn. We will be putting an offer for a temporary pastor for Pastor Scott Shuker to join us. He will be with us starting December 3rd. Um, he is coming up here from Fort Wayne, so we will be helping him out there. I will try to get him to write some little type of bio to put in the messenger once I know when all that is due. So just be looking forward to him to be here on a regular basis starting December 3rd, because he will be in the Narthex, or in the Parsonage helping us, excuse me. Um, so that's what I have from the call committee. And I want to say a wonderful praise to God for Don Olson. We thank the doctors out there. We thank for bringing them through and giving us good news. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of birthdays this month. So <laughs> all those who have birthdays, thank you. And welcome. And let's sing a quick happy birthday to all those if we can. Can you play happy birthday, Carolyn? No? <laughs> How about acapella? <laughs> 
fast and it will be a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation that's from Zephaniah 1 14 and 15 the Lord will search out and punish the men who are comp compliant concerning his word who will fill their master's health with violence and fraud from Zephaniah 1 9 and 12 then all their works and efforts will be for nothing though they build houses they shall not inhabit them Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. But those who fear love and trust in the Lord are good and faithful, stewards of his property. They live by faith in his free gift of forgiveness, and they multiply his good in the loving forgiveness of their neighbor. And the master of those servants settled his account with them by the gracious reckoning of his gospel. Likewise, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us also put on the breastplate of faith and love in our dealing with one another. Now, Pastor Joe Marsh will lead us in our worship today. Thank you. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Father, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. We confess, we confess that, that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, have sinned against you in thought, and word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God has had mercy on us and given us his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become the children of God, and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do we sit during this hymn or stand? Pardon? <laughs> we sit. All right, I'm going to sit. <laughs> storm. 
Testament reading today is from Zephaniah 1, 7 through 16. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests. And on that day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who array themselves as foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traders are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hasting fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of triumph blasts the battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. Here ends our Old Testament reading. Our gradual today is from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. We will read responsibly. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you have formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. 
You return man to the dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years from the sky, our God has been made from the past. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewing in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and renews. In the evening it fades and For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seven, for even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but a toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days, that we may get hearts of wisdom. We now sing, Open Our Eyes. Testament reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written for you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying, there is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. For those who get drunk, are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on a breastplate of faith and love and for the helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live in him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Now we will sing, Open Our Eyes. <laughs> for today. I am on, aren't I? Yep. It's from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. For it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. 
Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you, set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, <clears throat> he also, who had the two talents, came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and I hid your talents in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you know that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take, the, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents, for to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, into that place there will be and in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. And I guess I preach now, huh? <laughs> Text I've chosen for today is from Isaiah 45. Verses 1 to 7. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him, that gates may not be locked. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasury of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me, and there is no God. I'm sorry, beside me there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. <clears throat> I have to admit, when I first read that text, I thought, huh? I don't know what he's talking about. It seemed kind of dry, you know? And I also thought to myself, what in the world has this got to do with people up in Duluth, next to the North Pole, <laughs> Minnesota? But the more I studied it, the more astounding that text became to me. It's an amazing text. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. Before we really understand this text, we have to know some history. Isaiah was, maybe you know this, maybe you don't. How many books are in the Bible? Anybody know? 66. Guess how many chapters there are on Isaiah? 66. The Bible is divided into two major parts, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant or Testament. Isaiah is divided into two major parts right down the road. The New Testament tells us all about Jesus. Isaiah tells us all about Jesus. There's a lot more to Isaiah, but it's kind of an amazing book. Part of the Isaiah was written when Judah 
the southern part of Israel was independent, had their freedom. And part of it was written during the 70 years in captivity in Babylon. So it was written at two completely different times. When this text was written, Judah was experiencing a great deal of pain and sorrow. They were afraid. They were afraid of being invaded. Not too many years previously, the pagan nation of Assyria had invaded the northern kingdom of Israel and carried off the ten tribes that lived there, and they were lost to history. We never hear anything more about those ten tribes. The southern part of the kingdom was in great fear because they were becoming more and more powerless in the face of these pagan kingdoms, Babylon especially, and they had little or no hope for the future. That's when Isaiah comes in and speaks these words. In the middle of chapter 44, Isaiah mentions a king by the name of Cyrus. I'll tell you why that's so amazing in a moment. And in chapter 45, he says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to King Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. Isaiah told the southern kingdom that a foreign king by the name of Cyrus was going to come. And he calls Cyrus anointed, which is really strange because who's anointed in the Old and New Testament? Prophets, King David, Elijah, Elisha, but he's talking about Cyrus, a pagan king, being anointed. Well, all anointed means that he's set apart. We know that God used foreign kings many times in Old Testament history to chastise, to punish Israel for their unbelief. And he says he will loose the belt of kings. Well, you've heard the phrase, I'm sure, in the Old and New Testament, they girded up their loins. You know what that means? It doesn't mean they pulled their pants up. <laughs> it means they put on a belt that held their sword. They girded their loins to go to battle. And so Isaiah says, when Cyrus comes along, he's going to ungird their belts. He's going to disarm them. He's going to take their belt and their swords off. Now there's a part of this that's sort of like a Paul Harvey rest of the story. We'll get to it. We know a lot about Cyrus. In the British Museum in England, there is a cylinder called the Cyrus Cylinder, and it tells all about this King Cyrus, a clay tablet. The Roman historian Pliny names a whole bunch of people, uh, nations, that he brought under his control. The Syrians, the Assyrians, the Arabians, the Cappadocians, the Phrygians, the Phoenicians, and many more. He was this huge powerhouse. And he also predicted that Cyrus was going to defeat Babylon now. I don't know how many highways there are coming into uh, Duluth. Only one that I know of. It's the only one that I took. But the city of Babylon was so large that it had a hundred gates. And they were guarded by iron bars and soldiers. Now when Cyrus came to Babylon, he wanted to take the city. And so he had his army, if you can believe this, divert the entire river of the Euphrates so that the river level would go down. And there was a gate in the city of Babylon that guarded that river because the river was usually high enough and the gate would 
hang over it and dip down into it a little bit. So when Cyrus got to Babylon, the water was so low, he and his army just walked in under that cave. <clears throat> and usually in ancient cities, they had two sets of walls. The outer walls protected the city, and then the inner walls protected the, the king and his palace. And what a coincidence, the night Cyrus and his army came in, the gate to the inner city was unlocked. That's what Isaiah said. He said, you'll walk into that city and the iron bars won't stop you and the gates will be open. They took the city of Babylon with almost no bloodshed. Okay, there'll be a quiz about this here in about five minutes. <laughs> so what? Ancient history, what's that got to do with us up here in the North Pole of Duluth? Isaiah wrote these words 200 years before Cyrus was even born. Huh? If that doesn't blow you away, I don't know what does. Who's going to be president in 200 years in the United States? Nobody? They're not born yet. And will there be a United States in 200 years? We don't know. 200 years before Cyrus was even born, Isaiah is talking about him coming into Babylon under, the, under this gate called the Water Gate, walking into the city with almost no bloodshed and taking charge of Babylon. Well, we're all familiar with Isaiah 53. We read that about Easter time. What's Isaiah 53? It's kind of a photograph of the crucifixion. And it's written 700 years before Christ. And yet when Isaiah writes it, it sounds as if Isaiah was standing right there watching the crucifixion. Now there's a characteristic of God that we don't talk about too much, and that's his foreknowledge. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what's coming up. There aren't going to be any surprises for him. So what's the lesson in this for Christ in North Pole of Duluth? God knows what's going to happen to you individually tomorrow. You don't know. You think you know, but God does know. And the day after that, and the day after that. And he knows what's going to happen to Christ's church, too. Too bad, he isn't gonna, too bad we don't have Isaiah around so he can tell us. <laughs> but to me, that's tremendously comforting because if God knows what's going to happen to me, you know what? I don't have to worry because I'm his child. And everything he does for me and for you as his children is always for his glory and for our benefit. Now sometimes I know when I was a kid I thought my parents were out to get me. Anybody, well, there's a few teenagers here, you don't have to raise your hands, I know. I think. <laughs> that they're there to make my life miserable. I absolutely believe. It wasn't until I had kids of my own that I began to realize how much my parents loved me. Because of how much I love my kids and my grandkids. And I care about what's going to happen to them and I sometimes lose sleep over them. Isaiah knew that God was going to use this King Cyrus to free the Jews. And sure enough, Cyrus came in. And guess what? As a kid, Cyrus read these words from Isaiah. He said, me? I'm going to, I'm going to cover this huge kingdom, and I'm going to defeat Babylon? And he kind of believed in this God that we believe in. And so when he came in and took Babylon, guess what he did? He set the Jews free. These were the children of Isaiah that he had read about. And they went back home and they rebuilt the city and rebuilt the temple. 
Now, if God can use Cyrus as pagan king, he also used Herod for his purposes with the arrest and the crucifixion of Jesus. That was all part of God's plan. He can use Putin. <laughs> he can use Hamas. He can even use presidents that we like or don't like to carry out his purposes or his glory for our benefit. Now that some of you have a concern about something that's coming up. Surgery, old age, medical problems. And since we're approaching the holidays, some of us get a little uptight about that. Because we have to be with Aunt Jenny, and we can't stand Aunt Jenny. <laughs> I hope there's no Aunt Jenny, sir. <laughs> but something is on our mind. Something we're thinking about. Something we're worried about. Something causing us concern, maybe sleeplessness. God knows what that thing is. I have a little journal I write in once in a while. And I look back periodically, I look back about a year ago when I found, I realized that my cousin's husband had died down in St. Louis about a year ago. I didn't know that was going to happen. Neither did she. But you know what? It all turned out fine. And some of the stuff I was worried about a year ago, I'm still worried about, which is kind of dumb. Because God's in charge. I don't have to worry about those things. I don't have to lose sleep over them. I can just give them to him. And as they say in recovery, <laughs> let God just be God. We don't have to be God. I'd like you to take that one thing right now. This is audience participation. And just let go of it. Just let God have it. Let him deal with it. Because he loves you. He sent his son to die for you. How much more love can anybody show, the Bible says, than that he gives his life for his brothers and sisters? Now, we don't know how we're going to end up. We don't know the end of the story <clears throat> of our life, of this church, of the United States, or anything else. But we do know that God's moving the gears of history, even through pagan people, for our benefit and his glory. Like Cyrus, we know that he will defeat our enemies. In fact, he already has. Sin, death power of the devil. And because of God's foreknowledge and his promises, we are secure in an insecure world. Now I rewrote Isaiah 45 a little bit. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, that's you, those who believe and trust in Jesus Christ, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue sin before you and to disarm your enemies, especially the enemy death, to open the doors of heavenly kingdom before you, that the gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level all the insurmountable obstacles before you. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasure of my eternal kingdom, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. Amen. Now may the peace of God that goes beyond anything we could ever understand keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus.
sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and love. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For Thyself says, give divine, give in holy hands above, offering upon every shore her pure sacrifice of love. For to all to Thee we raise this our hymn of faithful praise. For Thyself bless gift divine to our race so freely given. For that great, great love of Thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Please rise. We confess together our um, faith in the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will come from the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord God, we thank you today that you have sent prophets, priests, and kings to usher into your kingdom people who know you and who trust you as Lord and Savior. We thank you for Isaiah who spoke things that he probably did not even understand, things that would happen centuries after he lived things that bring us comfort and truth in our day. We ask that you continue to bless this church and congregation and each of us individually. We remember those who are sick, ill, or absent for whatever reason, to bring them closer to you through your experiences that you bring to them. We thank you for the gift of salvation and the gift of life. All of these things we ask and thank you for, in Jesus' name, amen.
Lord be with you. Oh, let's try that again. We can do better. I, I did skip the things. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Oh, that's a little better. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, in power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Our Lord Jesus, I apologize. This is the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink a drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. You better know what to do, because I don't know how you do this. You may be seated. <clears throat> yeah. Take 
Nikki, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given unto death for the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, how bright 
the path rose from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in true love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Sing, he changed. 
truth, escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.